Hello and welcome to Your Daily Detroit. It is Wednesday, February 14th, 2024. Happy Valentine's Day to those who are celebrating. Today we're talking about Black Tech Saturdays, the growing social media presence of the city of Detroit, and a whole lot more. Let's get started. Joining me at the Daily Detroit studio at Tech Town, three wonderful guests. We're going to work from left to right around the table. Left, Alexa Turnage, co-founder of Black Tech Saturdays. Welcome. Hello, everyone. We are enjoying the sunshine down here at Tech Town. We're happy to be here. I got to say, the windows are pretty nice. To have a podcast studio with two sets of windows, I'm yes. pretty lucky. And across the table from me is Johnny Turnage, co-founder of Black Tech Saturdays. So glad to be here. Good to see you. And then to my right, Ethan Lloyd, social media manager for the city of Detroit. Hello. Hey, how you doing? So you're the one who posts all those videos I see lately. <laughs> you're that guy. I'm that guy. Oh, okay. that guy. That will make anybody go viral. <laughs> yep. Can you help me? Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's just jump into it. Black Tech Saturdays, let's talk about what it is for the uninitiated. Black Tech Saturdays is a gathering, is a community kind of just convening of joy that takes place at New Lab in Michigan Central two to three times a month where we bring together the tech curious founders, entrepreneurs, investors, and all different ecosystem leaders in our city to create a community pool of wealth and knowledge so that we all can grow and learn faster. Just from, from us gathering, we haven't even, we're almost a year old. People have found their co-founders, investment opportunities, amazing connections have been made every single week. People have found jobs, access to all the different resources that are available in this city. And it's just been amazing to watch this community grow. Let's talk a little bit about the impetus so that people at home know there are some gaps in the tech community, right? Of course. Of course. Of course. So uh, can uh, outline those a little bit? I think one of the things we quickly realized when we started forming is there's a gap of knowledge. There's definitely a lack of access to networking capital. And one of the things I come into is my background in community organizing. You don't know, but you don't know. So it has to start with, we all have a different gift we bring to the table. So let's first get into the room and let's start talking about those gifts and just own that. Michigan, although we're like growing in innovation, we need more investors. We don't have a true pre-seed, somebody who is patient capital, who's like, look, you have an idea. I'm going to get you that first 50, 100, 250K to go try the thing, do the thing, and have that rapid approach. We also need a lot more mentorship. We have a lot of the biggest tech companies in the city, and depending on where you are on your journey, you don't realize that a Google, Microsoft, Amazon is here to go tap into that knowledge, and we wanna keep shining light on that. And then of course, tech jobs. Everybody's looking for like that perfect tech job. You really learn that by just getting into the room and talking to people. So always constantly trying to shine the light. And I think the most important piece of like what we do and gap in ecosystem, there's this like misnomer that there's not talent here, but there are so many talented people here. We just don't lift them up and say, but some of the dopest people are right here in Detroit. Or we put them in a box like automotive. Right. right? There's this idea because there are a ton of engineers here. There's a ton of talent. Yes. But it's that box of automotive. I want to circle back to that seed capital thing because yes. those at home might not realize that. That seed capital is so important because yes. you don't know what's going to come out of these investments. A lot of times right. it's something different than you expected. You mm -hmm. know? You're hundred percent like having the ability to understand that the way it's worked in very successful tech ecosystems, it was more of a scattered approach. I'm going to invest in 10 things. And one of those things are going to go there. You're going to start down one road and realize, oh, we thought this was our revenue method. We're making a lot more money over here. Think about Cash App. Think about Facebook. What they started out to yeah. be is not what they became. Exactly. Twitter. Twitter. Exactly. Like That was a podcasting app, and I remember that very well <laughs> as a podcaster. <laughs> and it's like embracing that innovation comes out of necessity. It comes out of you having to figure it out. And until you get into that very messy, iterative process, you don't know. Yeah, that free capital is, is so important. There's also gaps in the community as well, too, because obviously the city of Detroit is a supermajority black city. We also forget that Metro Detroit is a very diverse region yes. as well. Mm -hmm. So what are ways that Black Tech Saturdays help fill that gap? Here, I'll kick it off and turn it over to Alexa. One of the things we do is by creating that authentic safe space to like celebrate that lived experience, we are a very diverse ecosystem. When we started, it was just five of us Black founders meeting on a Saturday, and then we quickly realized more people need to be here. And then what happened next was amazing. There's a huge immigrant community that comes to Black Tech Saturdays, an Arab American community, mm -hmm. Asian community. And it's like, oh, we all needed to step into a space where we could just be relaxed and we can let people embrace that and trying to be thoughtful with celebrating that experience. Like even our Latinx population, yeah. we're right there at the crux of Southwest Detroit. And I go, 
one of the early speakers at Black Tech Saturdays that I think helped us like differentiate, we had a VC from Mexico break down all the terminology. Mm. And like at the time there was a Latino founder walking in the building and I'm like, I remember his eyes go, that's me, that's me. Well, they later yeah. met up in Mexico and that's how he actually started to figure out how to do the investment process. I got to mention when I see Black Tech Saturdays on Instagram, it's joy. I'm not yeah. sure if it's a tech meetup or church. <laughs> that, I was, that is so funny you just said that. I was just about to say, Black Tech Saturdays, it's church for tech people, the tech curious, for those hungry for knowledge, for those hungry for new wisdom. It's really just us creating community wealth in a different way. And if you've ever been to a church service, you definitely need to come to Black Tech Saturdays because we are not a, just, because it's Black Tech Saturdays, of course, we want everybody to know it's inclusive. Anybody is welcome to attend come and learn come and just meet some new people you know in michigan we haven't seen the sun in how many weeks it's just like come out i brought get, it here just for you okay <laughs> yes did my best <laughs> it gets lonely at home especially here in michigan where you know it gets cold it's like come out and just jump into the water and you just be amazed at how much joy and impact you can have just by coming and being in the room we're going to get into some of the things that you do ethan with the city yes right. but for you first what attracted you to Saturdays? So I could see the vibrancy through the phone because I saw it on social media before I saw it in person. And that's pretty much with everything in my role. I see everything on social media before I see it in person. Yeah. And the small through, window before the big window. Absolutely. And the energy was, it was so vibrant and I felt it. And Johnny actually reached out to me and I already knew about him. He didn't know. He said, hey, I'm Johnny from Black Tech Saturdays. I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> we, we know each other, but we don't know each other. I just immediately knew that it was a space where teaching was allowed and learning was allowed and yeah. where it was encouraged and supportive and whatever capacity I could have been involved in that I wanted to be. It's something that feels like it has risen quickly, but I know from personal experience those stories are much longer yeah. than what it looks like on social media through the small window. Of course. When did you know that you had something that was getting some momentum beyond like the five that you started with? I think it takes it back. We had the first official Black Tech Saturdays, April 29th of 2023. But about the third week in, I told Alexa, I made a growth chart for us on how turnout would grow in prediction. You seem like the kind of fellow who would make a growth <laughs> chart. <laughs> Johnny makes charts for all types of things. Before How is he that asked, living with him? Look, before he asked me to marry him, he came to me with a pro and cons list of why we should be together. So this man has a plan for everything. If oh. you want to win, put Johnny in. He has it. <laughs> How does that work with that? I have so many questions. Oh, I can it, it, gets, this it gets pretty so serious. <laughs> it, gets pretty, it gets pretty serious. He's very organized, which I'm very thankful for. We played our strengths. <laughs> Well, there's got to be a yin and a yang, right? <laughs> of course. There's, there's there got to go. be. Exactly. But that third week when we ran out of food and there were all these people, but what happened is there was, I think, a VP from GM. They were like, I'm like, we have really senior talent. This isn't just like startup founders and like, all right, people come from the academy. I'm like, why are all these people coming here? So we really started to like listen in. And a moment came when somebody reached out from like, they came up from Miami. And they're like, I saw this on LinkedIn. I didn't know it was real. And I was like, all right, whatever we predicted isn't actually what we think is going to happen. We have to go back to the drawing board and rewrite, well, what is this? Let's think about it. And then what does this community need? We can't just bring people together without having, I'm like, are we solving any problems for them? Are we helping them? And that's when we said it evolved. And I think from June on, we started doing things a little bit different. Spreadsheets, uh, and no offense to those who make them. <laughs> But spreadsheets tell you what happened, but they can't always tell you what will happen. Exactly. Right. And that is something I've learned in my journey a lot doing, yes. this, doing this. So you're getting this momentum and everything. And one of the things I appreciate about it, and disclosure, I think we have some mutual friends, which is part of how I discovered this, yeah. yes. is that you all seem to step firmly and you didn't ask people necessarily for permission. And one of the things I have learned about the successful things in this area are People who step forward and say, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And you don't say, well, I'm only going to do it if mm -hmm. you say you're going to make it happen. So what was the moment where you're like, OK, we have to do this. Like step it even farther back. I think it goes back to before we had the first one, we were sitting in that conference room. A founder looked on my computer and saw me ask ChatGPT to evaluate a question I was answering to for a grant. And she's like, you use ChatGPT to prompt it? And I was like, wait a minute. How are we using this? And I was like, oh. The reason things are so scattered is we all don't even know the same thing. I think I'm learning, but where I am might be further than them. And I was like, we're doing a disservice to come in this room and think we can get far. There are hundreds of people. The way tech works, 
we got to say, listen, spread it out. They don't invent the same thing twice in Silicon Valley. We innovate off of each other. And I was like, if we can share that knowledge, this mindset of the community wealth becomes generational wealth, whatever I know, you should know. And we pass that baton. One of us is going to break through and then we're going to yeah. keep pulling each other forward. That's for sure. When I think about founders and we gotta, we kind of go back past April of last year when we started Black Tech Saturdays, we kind of were looking at a scope of the entire ecosystem and just doing an analysis. Johnny and I traveled to Atlanta. We traveled to Houston, L.A., Austin, Texas, where all these other ecosystems were being built. And we said, why don't we have that in Detroit? Founders need the space to be able to fail fast and shift quickly. As you do that, you learn and you grow, and then that's how you gain momentum and you see milestones taking place. Some of the things I've learned, even growing this project, I've learned through traveling. Yeah. yeah. Because we like to think that we are a unique snowflake, and there are so <laughs> many ways that Detroit is. And we are, yeah. yeah. But also a lot of people have done stuff before. Exactly. exactly. And we can learn from that. Ethan, you sit at the intersection of media and technology yes. mm -hmm. with your stuff. So what are some of the things that you're bringing to your position at the city that you've learned over the years? Because it is something that... Uh, the, the change is palpable right. and there's just been a lot more engagement with the city account in a way right. that city accounts normally it's like, oh, new trash pickup. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and that's important as a resident. <laughs> right. I want to know about that. Yes. But it feels like there's another level to it. So how are you yes. thinking about that? So what I learned, I'd say over the past three years while running a social media marketing firm is that the human attention span is decreasing, not increasing. We are dealing with being in the era of short and sweet. Things need to be short and sweet and digestible in a short and simple way. And what I sat down and realized, and this was the first viral moment I ever had on social media was, what if I boiled this down so that anybody could understand it, any age, any group at all times? And I keep in mind the culture of the audience that I'm speaking to. So what I did was I said, okay, let me not uh, talk about these governmental concepts on a governmental level. Let me talk to people about it on a people level. And I realized, let me boil this down so a seven-year-old can understand it. And let me make it short enough so that a seven-year-old can uh, retain it. And do you feel good. like that opens doors to the deeper conversation? I think so. Okay. I think so. And what I love about this space is I think that social media is like the digital manifestation of the human condition. I really think it taps me into the way that people think, the way that people are, the way that we interact, you know, because of lockdown, this is the number one form of communication and the number one form of socialization. Yeah. So I keep that in mind with the city, but just also in general with what I put out on social media, you know, a lot of people and creators get mad at the algorithm, but after a few years of being in communications, what I've learned is many times the algorithm is more mirror Yes. Then it is director. Absolutely. And what I learned about the algorithm. <laughs> in a great sense. And so <laughs> listeners know a lot of tech companies kind of have their secret sauce or whatever to yeah. surface content for you. Because if you were to get the entire raw feed of everything in your Facebook friends or whatever, yes. you would be completely overwhelmed. So it prioritizes that for you. It absolutely does. But it's all rooted in engagement is what I learned. They focus on what people are most likely to interact with. That's what you see because it keeps you on the app longer. What I wanted everybody at Black Tech Saturdays to learn at my workshop was that you need to look at this from the perspective of the app creator, not mm -hmm. just the consumer. Look at it from the perspective of the producer, which is the fact that I am in competition with Snapchat if I'm Twitter, I'm in competition mm. with Instagram if I'm YouTube. And what I need is for people to stay glued on my app more so than hopping off and going on to another one. So I'm going to push the content to the front of everybody's face that's getting interacted with the most. That's how your explore page, your for you page is defined. You see what's most interacted with. So what I teach content creators to do is to make content that's easily engaged with. And we hmm. broke that down last Saturday. As a creator, do you ever feel frustrated that there's something that you really care about that maybe doesn't get as many views as you like? Or do you feel like you need to go back to the lab and figure out a way to fashion that better? At first, I was very offended by the metrics. <laughs> and then I realized what you said earlier. It's a mirror. What I learned is this is 
a 100% manifestation of public interest. This is public interest. The data that I receive back, the views, mm -hmm. the likes, the comments, the saves, the shares. This is telling me how many people care about what I'm talking about. Yeah. So I took my feelings out of it and I realized, how can I make this in a way so that people care more? And when I did that, my content shot through the roof completely. One thing I've learned doing this, though, is that there is a room for a longer conversation. Yes. It's just maybe not on social media. Yes. Right. And, and so having something that I like to call like sidecar media, where mm -hmm. you're driving, you're doing something else. I feel like, unfortunately, what ends up losing in that is like the standard text article or yeah. whatever that mm -hmm. you, would, you would sit with. That people are so busy nowadays mm -hmm. that it, it's hard for them to cut through. And, and maybe I'm wrong. You feel free to tell me I'm wrong in my own house. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that. What we have to know is that we're dealing with less time than ever. You only have, in my opinion, three seconds to get somebody's attention. That's my rule of thumb. The most interesting part of whatever I'm doing needs to come first, not last. This is the time of best for first, not best for last. The most interesting part of my video needs to be up front and center. The most interesting part of my graphic, my headshot, it all needs to be at front and center and it needs to be digestible in the first three seconds or I've missed the mark and it's going to fade off into the meta universe you know is so. this one of the reasons why when I did a video that uh, the Hudson's Tower kind of looks like a robot mm. that, that that went semi-locally <laughs> viral is that it just because yeah Makes yes, sense. absolutely. <laughs> I find it amazing, the content, Ethan, that you put out. It paints a picture and it grasps our attention in a different way. The information that you put out about the city Thank is you. not just like you said about the trash pickup. It shines light on our life in a different way. The fact that we love burners, that yes. we can see the sunlight. <laughs> I just love the way that you pull it all together and it pulls us in. Yes. But a lot of very serious people get upset about that. Hmm. You know, like very serious media people yeah. are like, well, it's only the candy or, or whatever. <laughs> you know, you're just giving me you're just giving me Reese's peanut butter cups, you know, no, no peanut butter. But if it's done right, I think it can have some of the peanut butter, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. People always fight change and updates and things. But what I tell people is these apps update every single day. So what's working right now is not necessarily going to work a year from now. We can have the same conversation and I'll tell you something completely different, right? And what I also like to keep in mind wow. is the sweet with the sour. So, you know, we talk about serious information and things of that nature, but I'm also going to talk about the fact that we call it pop and not soda. I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about these things, but it's a more well-rounded conversation. And I can appreciate that because I am a Detroiter. And so I know other Detroiters can appreciate that. I went into this role saying I want it to feel like a Detroiter ran mm. this page. Yeah. And that's how they feel. That's what it feels like. Yeah. It's like you bring the fun. I love the, the knowledge and the wisdom that you bring, but it also brings all the fun and exciting things that are coming up. And just the way you bring it together is pretty thank amazing. You. So thank you for that. I think the same thing is done at Black Tech Saturdays, by the way. I feel like it's run by our own. You know what I mean? And that's very powerful and potent. And that leads me to my question about you all. How do you cut through with the event, do you think? Because you're right. Time is short. And I feel like it's both... Harder to, as, than ever to get people to get out of the house, but also there's so much demand to get out of the house and do something. It's a very like two things at the same time mm -hmm. kind of thing. The, yes. the casually getting out of the house is a lot less nowadays. And you got to really show your value if you're going to get somebody to go somewhere. I think our team has done a really good job of capturing the joy and painting the picture of the vibrant energy that you can experience coming out on a Saturday. Let's get really just real here. Saturdays are for soccer games, doing the laundry, making sure you have everything you need for the week. Me and Johnny, of course, have adjusted our week now since my laundry day now is Sunday and not Saturday. And it's like, how do you pull people away from that, even just for a few hours? We have to capture that if you come, you're going to get something out of this. It's going to be worth your time. And you're going to just come and experience this community in a way that you never have before. And I think that's the power of what we've been able to bring together as a community. Whether it's in person or online. I feel like the theme is you have to bring a lot of value. Yes. Yeah. I think value. And one thing I think you pointed out, the joy. I think we live in a very interesting time and things that are joyful, nostalgic, that pull us into that moment of, I'm like, that helps. Like, and a we lot need of a people are tired. We're tired. Yeah. We're tired. Yeah. We're tired. We're tired. Like, the isn't it some hard years lately? It has. Yes. Yes. It, it really has. <laughs> and if you really think of a lot of content, you know, all of us like our true crimes and mm -hmm. all the interesting things that can help us, the shows that we figure things out and we're figuring out different 
crimes or whatever the case may be. But we have to incorporate the joy. And I think, like you said, these few past few years with COVID and everything that we all have been through has been heavy. It's been really heavy. And so just having something that can kind of, when you think of the Allegra allergy pill commercial, take the plastic off and let's just get a breath of fresh air just around each other and just grow and learn from one another in a different way. I know all about allergies. (laughs) Okay, so what's next for uh, Black Tech Saturdays? And we'll also get get to you too, Ethan. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the coolest things that happened with the workshop is We've been brainstorming a way to do something that I've been really obsessed with. How do we share the platform? And with Ethan's help, I think we found the beginning of that. We had what we're going to go ahead and say the largest video collaboration in Detroit's history. We had over 80 people do a collab post at the same time. And the 80 is just the people posting the Instagram because I forget we've got the TikToks and the LinkedIn's. But having that many people in one moment use the tool, having them learn from it. And we want to continue doing that. We want to continue teaching people how to tell their story, how to use tech tools, and how to really just show off what's going on with Detroit. On top of like more events coming up, we've got our Black History Month celebration and then a beautiful opportunity. Alexa and I are going to be down at South by Southwest with Lieutenant Garland Gilchrist interviewing us about Black Tech Saturdays. How do you build an ecosystem? How do you bring that inclusivity? And we want to really help more people do this kind of thing in their neighborhood. I love to hear that about Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist. He's been on our show a couple of times. And oh, awesome. He is one of the brightest people in leadership. I don't care what party or what you believe in, but he yeah. is yeah. one of the brightest people in leadership I have ever met. I completely agree. The wisdom and knowledge that he can galvanize all of us and just bring us all in is, is pretty powerful. And then the focus, the fact that Lieutenant Governor sat down with us and said, I want to be helpful. Here's who I can do. Here's who I can introduce you to. I want to be here. I want to be supportive. And he's like, I'm a techie. I was just like you. And I want other people to have that experience to go chase their dreams. So how can I be supportive? Yeah. Ethan, over at the city of Detroit, you've had some accomplishments lately. How are you going to top it? I think that what I'm going to do now, and it's a little bit of doing the same thing. I really want to capture the feeling of what it is to be a Detroiter. I want to showcase that on social media. I also want to keep the residents informed of what's going on in Detroit. So that's always an ongoing thing. There's always new, amazing things going on in the city. And that's the main thing, just informing residents and showing the residents that, you know, it's cool to be a Detroiter. It's the thing to be, honestly. It and, really is. Yeah. And <laughs> you, you'll notice other cities trying to be like Detroit in different ways, whether that's mm-hmm. our music, our art, anything, you know. It goes without fail that I hear music from Detroit in every city I visit. Of course yes. you do. <laughs> yes. I, I was in Columbus and I heard Aretha. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. I was uh, hearing funk made down the street from here at the uh, the studio that, that they're looking to save yeah. there. I heard that in Chicago. There's, it, It's just something that is... Ubiquitous. So would, if people want to look for your work, where can they go? So you can go a few places. You can check the city of Detroit on any social media platforms and you'll see my work. If you want to look under the hood, behind the scenes, behind the curtain on how it happened, you can look on my Instagram at Ethan, E-T-H-A-N dot L-L-O, and you'd be able to see the thought process behind showcasing the culture of a city. All right. Now for Black Tech Saturdays, what yeah. can people do? You can find us on Instagram at Black Tech Saturdays or make sure to follow Johnny and I on LinkedIn under our names or just tick Black Tech Saturdays and you'll we'll be sure to come up. As a veteran young guy website. and geriatric millennial, I feel included now with LinkedIn. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> LinkedIn is – I love walking around this building and just around the city. I feel like sometimes my LinkedIn profile comes to life when I see all my friends from LinkedIn. And Johnny just also noted you can find us at blacktechsaturdays.com. But LinkedIn, it's just a fun way to connect all of us with all the work that we're doing. So I think that's pretty cool. Well, Alexa Turnage, Johnny Turnage, and Ethan Lloyd, thank you for your time here at Daily Detroit. I appreciate all of you. And I think I'm going to have to make it out to one of, of these. Thank you. We would love to have you. Thank you. Thank you.